self managing is basically when you have a network you have an access point and an extender or range extender or repeater um, how the devices have to be distributed between them so that there is good load balancing going on a good example would be in the, if, if you are if you're in a home you uh, the, the coverage in your bedroom is not good but you have a TV there uh, working on Wi-Fi so how, uh, how you can improve the coverage is you put a range extender or a repeater in the bedroom so if you uh, you carry your phone uh, the TV works fine with the Wi-Fi there but in the night you carry your phone over to the bedroom and then it it basically connects to the uh, range extender that's fine but in the morning when you come down on its own phone may not the phone may still be connected to the repeater you are you are you are on your first floor now very close to the access point but it might still be connected to the range extender which means the performance on that phone is pretty bad it would be better served if it is connected to the access point so that's a very simplistic example of how you know these complications might creep in so wi-fi is on you know with its self configuring and self managing capabilities can switch that uh, connection to the right right link what layer is this done at so this or is so uh, it is done at the application layer as well as driver so okay. well, i mean Good. you know so um, we get we get the phones actually to do measurements and send back reports uh, so like you know firmware layer up to like the managing part mm -hmm. and the algorithm runs on the user space yeah so the 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 wi-fi son algorithms are part of a uh, software package that provide uh, along with our chipsets so these are run on so it our is on the firmware that runs on the on the access point why not do it at a lower level um, so, 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 like the IP level the driver everything if you know IP it's in the mechanism oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So, so, so yeah I mean um, like you know we have parts of it in okay. every layer So what we have here is the main access point, uh, we like which is depicted here on the uh, on the screen, and we have a range extender outside. Uh, we can go there if uh, anyone's interested. And right now, you know, and then both of these uh, access points have two bands: uh, the two five gigahertz band that is depicted here, and the two point four gigahertz band that's depicted up there. Um, and right now we have these five devices here that are all associated with the uh, five gigahertz band to the main router since they are very close to the main router. Okay. Uh, what we also have is uh, traffic going on. There's a Skype call on on this one. So we just have a Skype endpoint here. Um, you know. uh, and so the beauty of this algorithm is that while <coughs> the phones are in traffic for uh, BTM capable devices that supports uh, 802.11k and 802.11v standards, um, these devices can be moved fr seamlessly from one AP to the other uh, without like dropping the call or you know, without any impact to the performance. And actually, you know, the AP will make a decision as to what will serve the uh, device best. So once when we move these phones closer to the range extender, uh, they will be steered to the range extender. If left on their own, uh, they need the uh, RSSI, the signal strength, to drop really low before they will move on their own. Mm -hmm. But we don't want then the call would suffer, and so we don't want that to happen. So you know, uh, we have certain thresholds, and we we'll move it over if it will be served be better by the range extender. Uh, we also do load balancing between the channels. Um, if you know, if we see that there is uh, more load on one of the channels, and then we will move devices to the other channel so that the performance is optimal. And so we will we'll kind of show you. Yeah. So next, I will move this phone to phone out to the uh, nose to the range extender. You will see they will move it to the extender. So here, I mean, uh, the uh, access points work with the phones. Uh, like I mentioned before, they ask the phones to do measurements, and then they will send a request to steer it to the other access point. But it, uh, the devices can refuse to move. So you know, uh, most of them, yeah. So we did see he took two phones. We did see that they uh, moved to the range extender. Uh, next, what I'll do is start traffic on one of these phones. Um, 
and so as to overload, like I'm going to start traffic on this one, so as to overload the 5 gigahertz band, and uh, we should see phones move, moved up to 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, <coughs> You will also see that the backhaul link uh, gets shifted shifted there as the traffic starts. I mean, because we have adaptive path selection, and uh, so it selects the best path possible. So the uh, main AP and the um, repeater are like the link between them is also Wi-Fi. So you don't need to run any uh, cable or Ethernet cable or anything like that. 